course, you fought back pretty well, um, but I imagine it's not the result you were after coming into it. So how are you feeling after that one? Yeah, a little bit... Uh no emotion really I think I think you've hit the nail on the head I think it's a fair assessment we started very slowly I thought we were lethargic uh, I'm not sure why I'm going to have to find uh, the reason for that we went a goal down deservedly so it's a penalty probably should have gone two goals down uh, on the merit of the play um, then we steadied it a little bit obviously got the goal before half time and we addressed a few things at half time uh, I think in the second half first 15 minutes we come out like we should be uh, got our noses in front, probably should have gone 3-1 ahead. So that was a, another momentum shift. And then we concede a bad goal in a, in a transition. So and it goes 2-2. But then there was lots of chances both ends. It became a little bit open, a little bit basketball type. Um, lots of shots, not enough uh, shots on target probably. So it's probably a fair assessment, I think. You're undefeated to start the season, but you haven't exactly... Set the world on fire in your first no. two games. So where do you think you're at? Are you ahead of where you want to be? The level you want to be below? Where do you think you're at right now to start the campaign? Well, I think everyone tries to be better each week. You know, we're a new team. We know that. We've got new personnel. Um, you know, there's positives to take because we're unbeaten. And, you know, we played against uh, Sydney last week and obviously Newcastle this week. Um, so there is positives. Do I think our performance level was good enough this week for us? No, I don't. Uh, I think we need to be better. I think it showed in the second half how good a team we can be. Um, but, you know, obviously in the first half is something that we need to address as well. Jack Rodwell showed very promising signs off the bench again. How impressed have you been with him and, and how far off a start do you think he might be? Yeah, uh, again, I'm sure you'll ask me this every week. Jack Rodwell's a top, top player. We know that, and uh, we're very lucky to have him. I think you see in the short glimpses that he's he's been on the pitch that he probably could have, should have scored two goals today. One run was, uh, I think, was amazing. You know, he sat people down and uh, didn't execute the finish, which was disappointing, but he had another good chance on his left foot. So we want players to have opportunities. We want shots on target. We want action in goal mouths, and we certainly got that. So... Question, do I, how far do I think he's away? I, again, it's how long's a piece of string. You know, you can throw him in. I, I could throw him in next week and then he picks up an injury because he's not match fit. Uh, and then that wouldn't be the right thing to do. So I've got to gauge it in training. He played 45 minutes in the week in a, in a friendly game we had. Obviously, he's played 35 today. Uh, looked good again. So we've got a lot of games coming up in a short space of time. So he'll get his starts. He'll get his minutes, uh, as will all the other players. But no, it was very promising from him. Thanks, man. Okay, thanks. <laughs> wouldn't you like to know uh, no I just said we need to be better I, I thought we were passive I thought we were uh, we know we're a, a good team we've got good players but if you don't compete and you don't fight and you don't uh, you know scrap for little balls first ball second balls you don't make contact you don't run uh, you, you're going to be beaten by any team in this league and I think you know there was a, a few people that owned it because you got to have an accountable team and they said they can do more and I, I challenged them to do a little bit more each individually and then collectively. So we got our timings wrong on certain aspects of the game. Um, that's credit to Newcastle. Um, but we addressed that at half-time and I thought we were on top for that 20 minutes and we probably should have put the game out of sight because we're two and up. Uh, Rami has an excellent chance. Uh, decides to go with a finish, which is probably different to what I see day in, day out. If that goes 3-1, I think... We're ahead in the game and I think the game is out of sight. But we don't. They score literally from that transition and then it's end-to-end. -end. Anyone can win. Just, just last, um, I mean, your two goals kind of came from defensive errors rather than yep. doing build-up play. Does that concern you as well? No, no. I don't. If, if you look at you know, how many times your entries we get into the box and how many shots, you, you need a little bit of luck. You need to be in the right place at the right time. You know, there's a narrative of wanting a goal scorer but, and see how many... If, you can get a goal scorer to score 20 goals. Usually he's in the box looking for rebounds, deflections, things like that. So we scored two good finishes today. Yeah, it comes from a rebound or it comes from a, a turnover in play. You know, a good pressing opportunity for Toma. But, you know, if that's Premier League football, you're talking about how good that is at a pressing moment. So you can, you can spin it whichever way you want. I think they're two excellent finishes from us. Yes, it's mistakes by them. But you look at our goals, it's a mistake. We're diving in on a penalty and then we get done on a 1v1 on the outside with a cutback. So... It's whichever way you look at it. Do I want more? Yes, I do. You, you mentioned the guys, maybe. Yeah. Some guys wanted it a bit more than others. Is that, is that going to lead to, to changes, 
No, when I say wanting it more than us, you've got to start any game of football you play and you've got to be at it. If you're not at it and you're playing at 80% or 90%, not intentionally, but you know, you're a little bit slow in your mind, slow in your body, then you know the other team, the opposition team, are going to, and if they're at it, you're going to lose those little battles and one, two battles become four or five. You know, If everyone loses two battles and that's 20 battles you've lost even before you've started. So... Whenever you go onto the field, you have to make sure you win your individual battle. I don't think we won enough in the first half, even though we were still in the game. So, second half, we were a lot better. Last week, you, you were very solid defensively in the, in the yep. derby. Uh, the mistakes were, today were chalk and cheese for last week. As you yep. watched on the sideline, what was going yep. through your head and what was going wrong? I, I, you wouldn't want to be in my mind on the sideline today, believe me, because there was so many mixed emotions of positive stuff, some, you know, um, inconsistent stuff, some stuff that was driving me mad. But there was there was also a lot of good stuff as well. So in moments like that, I try and remain calm. You can't you can't change things from there by shouting and screaming and acting like a buffoon. So I don't try and do that. I try and get them in at half time and address certain scenarios. I try and pass on little messages with the substitutes that come on. So lots was going through my mind. I watch it again and I'm sure. It won't be as bad or good as I thought. Um, but I will say it was a really good game of football for a neutral to watch and a supporter to watch. Lots of goals, lots of action, end to end stuff. Nightmare for coaches, but. I meant more as a, a cause for what was yeah. happening. Why, why did we concede yeah. so many? What, what, what two goals? I don't know. I just think our timings are off. If your timing's off and you don't track a runner and the runner gets in behind you and you switch off, you know, I've watched lots of games this weekend, not just in the A League, but. Uh, all over, and usually goals come from mistakes. So switching off, uh, timings were wrong, um, inconsistent decisions. I think if you do that, you know, if you step to the ball, Reese Williams' example was phenomenal last week. He was strong again today, this week. Step to the ball, the boy got a touch on the ball, and last week he probably makes the tackle, a block tackle, and everyone says what a wonderful defender he is. Today, the boy touches it before Reese makes it, and everyone will say it's a mistake. No, he's still a wonderful defender, but his timing was off. That's the example I'll give you. Do you, uh, do you think Jack was a little bit lucky to only receive a yellow for that? No, I don't. I, I don't. I think he slipped. If you see that, he Gus, I think he caught Angus Thurgate. Uh, Gus is a good, honest boy as well. And he went over. Obviously, when 10 people jump up on the side, you know, it doesn't help the emotion of the of the challenge. He slipped. He put his hand up straight away. You know, two minutes earlier, he put a great crunching tackle in on the other side. So which I think they weren't happy with, but it was a, a tackle, a contact tackle, which happens. But no, I don't think he was lucky. I think it was a good tackle. Uh, he mistimed it, sorry. <laughs> he mistimed it, uh, but he slipped. And, and if you're going to you know, try and get people sent off for that, then you're going to end up with 9v8 and things like that. Uh, you know, and that's not what we want. You know, Yes, you can make mistakes or whatever. I think there was mistakes made on the weekend. Decisions that weren't given and things like that. I think that was a decision. Deserved yellow card. He caught him, uh, but he did slip. But that's not for me, that's for VAR.